Right. And now that song is just finished playing audio, and we're back to the video. You see how that works? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, what, 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 <laughs> why don't you guys tell us about Plague Rat? What is that song all about? Uh, it's a love song about killing bitches. <laughs> is that really what it's about? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love, love song about killing bitches. And well, how do you feel about that? Yeah. yeah. Not, not that we believe in that. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything that has my name as the writer, you know, chances are it's a love song about killing bitches. So is that most of your songs are about that? Yeah. <laughs> Drop yeah. dead, damn it! And that name is pretty cool, man. I do, I do admit, I, I gotta admit, the first time, yeah, I think you emailed me your songs way back when I first started the podcast. I played it, saw you guys were from Latin. I think I actually tried to get you guys to come out to Oklahoma City to do a you, live podcast. You did, yeah, and then you said no. I said no because I didn't know how this plague shit was going. Yeah, I dude, it is, it is scary. I was like, there's a band that's kind of close. So when you guys play in Oklahoma City, though, it was like an hour and a half back to Lawton? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. You ever accidentally get too hammered and you're like, fuck? No. <laughs> no? No. No. But I, I, we have a lot of, like, collectively, we have a lot I don't of, believe that. of experience. <laughs> like, like, one person has to always make the commitment not to get too fucked up so they can drive the rest of us home. Okay, so, so the band yeah, does get fucked up. But, so you have a designated driver. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We okay. don't do more, man. We don't do that stuff. Yeah, it, it's yeah. De- designated, uh, don't drink as much. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can have a couple beers, but yeah, yeah. We watch that stuff. Yeah, well, I I Uber it, but I just can't Uber it all the way to Latin. Could you? No. Could you? Who <laughs> call our gear? <laughs> so when you guys when you guys play shows in Latin, um. Do you get a pretty big turnout, like, from your home community? Yeah, we get a decent turnout. And what's yeah. your, I guess, what's your biggest hit? Sam likes that Velvet, what was it called? The Velvet Darkness. Yeah, well, what's, when, now that was off your last album? That's, that's off this EP, Hell, Hell of the Plains. Is that not it, Sam? It, what's Sam? My, my favorite was Leather Apron. Oh, Leather Apron. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's right. Not Velvet Darkness. Leather Apron. Well, Velvet it sounds the same. I got, I got that song. I got that song. Velvet Darkness stuck in my head. Ava, Ava, help him out. Ask some questions. He's going blank. His <laughs> mind is starting to darkness. Start to <laughs> um, I am curious, at least about your band name, where that came from. Um, actually, like I've always had the name Brandon Dammit in all my other bands. Um, so. When I was in the band Day of the Sick, I wrote a lot of music that wasn't punk rock, and I wanted to do like little solo things, you know, kind of like Nine Inch Nails, like just one guy doing all the shit. Right. And so I called it Drop Dead Damn It. <clears throat> then all these years later, when uh, we started playing, we were coming up with the name, and I said it as a joke, and nobody argued with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to come up with names, man. We're like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I, I'm amazed he didn't say it, it was because uh, he, it was because it was about bitches and it was about <laughs> killing bitches. Well, Leather Apron actually is about it's about Jack the Ripper. Oh, nice! Okay. <laughs> it's about his perspective. That's my favorite song too. I've been a fan of theirs since before I got in the band. So, my Leather Apron is my favorite song as yeah. well because of that Jack the Ripper thing. I have a lot of. I didn't write the lyrics to that song. John did. Okay. Oh, I got a question for your new bass player back there. So, what was it? So, how long have you known the band for? I have known them. Um, we played together. Uh, my previous musical partner and I, we had a little band together, and uh, that beginning band broke up. Got John on board, and he brought Brandon and Jesus in. So, we played together under the name Undead Evolution for a few months, six, seven months, something like that. And then we all kind of went our separate ways and me and my music partner went on and had a couple more bands and stuff, but we just recently broke up about a year ago. And so I've, I've known them. God, what? 10 years now. Yeah. Something like that. About that. 
How, and how long how long did it take for you to learn their new songs before you played? Because you guys just had the concert not that long ago. Now you got a new bass player. How how long? Four weeks. Four. So it took you four weeks to learn. How and how big was the set? Hour. Yeah. So how many songs is that? About ten songs. That's about ten. Yes. Yeah. We, we, just played, played, we just played last Saturday night. It was his first show in Wichita Falls, Texas, and uh, he did a he did a hell of a job. Really good. So 10 songs in four weeks. Jeez, dude, I don't know if I could do that. Well, I I personally couldn't, but many musicians probably can. Yeah, real real musicians can that understand notes and understand drum fills or basses, bass uh, notes. I'm I'm normally not a practice at home kind of guy, but for this, I broke my rule and uh, wore my family out with his songs. So, <laughs> so, so when when you plan? So I guess since the songs already the album's already recorded, that's with your old bass player, though, huh? Yeah. Yes. So, so when do you guys plan on writing new music coming out? Maybe sometime later on this year, or are you keeping the same set throughout the rest of the year? Well, probably. I have some new stuff that uh, we have a few more show commitments that we got to do before we can like take the time to start writing some stuff. But I have about four or five songs. Um, ready to start working on them. And if we record it, it'd probably be like in the summer or fall and try to put something out by the end of the year. This is so the point. When I, when I came up and I kissed you on the cheek, see, you seem like a really shy guy, but then when I was trying to kiss you on the cheek, you weren't really that shy about it. But I was scared the next day, what if he had COVID and I got it again? <laughs> I'm kissing you on the cheek. I, just got- I didn't think that. I just got my first shot of that. Oh, that's right. That's why you didn't care. You didn't care if I got it from you. <laughs> yeah. You're like, to your worries. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I forgot you did. You did mention that, man. All right. The next song, Velvet Darkness. Is this song also about killing bitches? Yes. <laughs> it's a love well, really, what else is it about? Love song about killing bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna play that song right now on the audio.
And just like magic, it's played and we're back again. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. That's probably going to be right around 30 minutes of the podcast. So how do people find you guys? Uh, where's your music? Where, where can they stream you? Bandcamp, Facebook, all that good jazz. Our Bandcamp, you can buy our new EP. We hope you do. You can buy the rest of our merch there, too. Is dropdeaddammitofficial.bandcamp.com. Uh, social media on everything, we're at Drop Dead Damn It. So that's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. And we have a YouTube, and I still don't fucking know, <laughs> I still don't know what it is. <laughs> if you search Drop Dead Damn It Band, you'll, it's, you'll it's, find it. It's at Drop Dead Damn It. Yeah, we okay. have two different ones on there, yeah. Yeah. Ava, if you could ask this band any other question... Off the top of your head. Because she asked me before we started, is it scripted? I said, no, you just got to wing things. And we're testing how she might be a co-host on the show. So I'm like, what? And I just, Sam and I just do a lot of talking. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get Ava in here to see what she would ask. Jump in there, girl. Jump in um, So being in, like, uh, uh, other bands that toured more often, like, do you find this band more fulfilling than the other bands? Or would you say, like, touring more often was more? <clears throat> um. I think this band is a lot more fulfilling for me personally. You know, touring how I've done it all the last 20 years or whatever um, can't happen anymore. It's just, it's not feasible. There's no way you can tour like that anymore. Um, We're starting now to branch out into, like, we've been offered a show in San Antonio in April, and we're playing, like, with a band called Haggard Haggard's Hellraisers, like, a back-to-back weekend show like Elk City, Oklahoma and like Pampa, Texas coming up in April. And um, so we're starting to branch out. But, you know, as far as playing out of town shows, I like to keep it within like a a certain range. You know, I I damn sure don't want to ever have to go tour for months and months on end. I'm just too old and I have kids. But this band's way more fulfilling. It, It seems like the way technology is like progressed, you can do more without really having to leave where you're at. And that's kind of awesome. But as long as I get to play shows for people, I'll always be happy. Right. Yeah. That was a great, that was a great question. You should have asked more questions. (laughs) (laughs) 